HQV movie lovers. It's my favorite night of the week because I get to glam out like I'm at a fancy premiere and not on my couch in sweats. And I get to bring you a star-studded trivia game all about movies. It's HQ Trivia Movie Night, babe. Look at that roller coaster. We're going to the movies. We're going to bring some snacks. It's going to be a party. I'm your host, the queen of your screen, Anna Roisman, and tonight, you heard me, we're going to Hollywood, baby, as we navigate the world of cinema through this very phone that you're on. I see you. Is that soda? Do you have soda there? Save me some candy. Okay, I want some. And tonight is every movie buff's weekly chance to show off that IMDB inside your heads. And if you're like me and you've spent most of quarantine just watching movies, then babe, we gotta talk. But also, you're gonna have an advantage in the game tonight. You've seen this trailer before. I am going to give you 12 questions all about movies and if you are cinema savvy enough to tap 12 correct answers, you will join the winner's circle and claim your share of the $5,000 prize pot. Ooh, that sounds nice tonight, right? 2020 has been quite a year so far, but you know who's winning? Streaming services. Literally like all 74 of them. Okay, we're not just Netflix and chilling anymore. Uh-uh, we're Disney plusing like Hulu Peacocks to the HBO Max. <laughs> what? And tonight, everything's fair game. From musicals to Bill and Ted face the music calls. I don't know, I'm watching Hamilton again. And while we celebrate the motion picture industry, we are, we are supporting a really good cause too. Let me tell you about Food Bank of the Rockies feeding 30 Colorado counties and all of Wyoming. Through the generosity of donors and volunteers, the bank has brought hope and nourishment to thousands of needy residents with over 300,000 meals each day, helping more than half a million people each year. Every dollar donated helps provide four meals, but the uncertainty of COVID-19 continues to challenge the bank as they struggle to share more food month after month with an increasing pool of people relying on them. So HQ is stepping up and matching tonight's prize money to benefit Food Bank of the Rockies, and you can help too. All you have to do is head to foodbankrockies.org to learn about their great work and give if you can. Right here, Food Bank rockies.org. All right, I think it is time to get this show started. Okay, these questions are spooled up in the projector. You guys ready to roll back there? They're ready to roll. Box office has 5K to hand out. They're just holding a bunch of money right now. I see it, I see it. Remember to keep your conversation to a minimum unless you're freaking out and filming your own movie of you winning. I love it. And might I suggest not silencing your cell phones? Okay, you might miss important information. Like, I don't know, question one, action. Public Enemies Fight the Power is featured prominently in a film by who? Spike Lee, Walt Disney, Orson Welles. We went right into it. So we like to start out easy, okay? He's using more than Marvin Gaye these days in films like The Five Bloods, but his, in his early days, Spike Lee opened Do the Right Thing with Public Enemy. Spike Lee is the answer, 62,243. You got it right, right off the bat. But think about it, Citizen Kane would have been pretty cool with that song, right? I mean, I, I feel like it. Tell me your favorite soundtrack. I wanna know your favorite soundtrack in the chat right now. Let me know your favorite movie soundtrack. I was thinking about mine earlier. I think mine's probably Clueless, honestly. <laughs> We're moving on to Q2. Which 1939 film was made in a mix of color and black and white? Gone with the Wind, Goodbye Mr. Chips, or The Wizard of Oz? If you didn't know this one, you might want to click your heels and hope that it brings you back into the game. The first thing people, many people learn from movies is Kansas is in black and white, but Oz is full of color. Oh yes it is. The Wizard of Oz is the answer. Who got it right? Who's taking it? 59,346. You're going to Oz, right? We're going to Oz together. With the prologue in this movie, plus the film's ending, about 22% of it had no color. Fun fact about The Wizard of Oz. Also, gotta love that Tin Man. I was like, I, I think I identify with the Tin Man, with the heart. All right, moving on to Q3. Which of these films was set during World War II? Glory, Saving Private Ryan, or War, Heart? War Horse? 
It may be a history question, as much as a film question, but you need to know the movies to be aware that World, World War II is when Private Ryan was a POW. Saving Private Ryan is the answer. 54,867. You saved yourself on this question and you got it right. The rest of you, you can still use an extra life. You can still save, save it and use it. Just so you know, Glory is one of the great Civil War flicks and War Horse was a first world war horse. Say that five times in a row. War Horse was a first world war horse and it was a Broadway play. <laughs> I tried it earlier, you know, it was my warm up for the day. All right, here we go with Q4. Which actor from the original Mary Poppins made an appearance in the 2018 sequel? Dick Van Dyke, Julie Andrews, or Glynis Johns? The sequel is legendary for its gap between the movies, right? It was a long time. So not everyone was still around, but lucky for us, Dick Van Dyke shined on the screen again. There he is, Dick Van Dyke in the old movie and in the new movie, 45,574. Ooh, you got it right. It was just a spoonful of sugar, right? Super easy. Listen, I learned that Julie Andrews, she didn't want to overshadow Emily Blunt as the new Mary. That's so sweet, women supporting women, we love. But Dick Van Dyke came back better than ever, gave us a whole dancing number. He's still doing amazing at his age and we love to see it. We're moving on to question number five. Who officiated the game at the end of Space Jam? Marvin, Granny, or Speedy? I'm singing the Space Jam theme song. One thing an NBA player will tell you is don't make the referee very angry, which can be tough with Marvin the Martian. Precisely, Marvin. if you don't find a fifth player, your team will forfeit the game. Yeah, he's tough. He's gonna be tough, right? Was it tough on you? Did you forfeit this game? I hope not, let's see. Let's see, 37,016! You are safe in the game. 9,000 of you, you know what? You said extra life, right? Maybe you wanna come back into the game. You know, think about this. This makes sense, okay? He wasn't from either of the competing planets, so he can stay neutral. And I hope you'll stay with me because I believe you can win. I believe you can answer questions. That was my rendition of uh, I Believe I Can Fly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Wow. All right, Q6. Which horror film featured both Janet Lee and one of her daughters? The Fog, Night of the Lepus, or Psycho? Well, for starters, her daughter is Jamie Lee Curtis, and they've done a couple of horror flicks together. You can see them both in Halloween H2O. But long before that, they appeared in The Fog. The Fog. Mm. Can I see through this fog? 13,948 got it right, and it is a savage question. Oh, it's a savage question. That's when they ask you to leave your seats in the movie theater. We have to escort you. You're too loud or too wrong on this question, but woo, that was tough. A lot of you thought it was Psycho. Was not Psycho. Was not Psycho. We got to shout out Nuvi for that image of Janet Lee and Jamie Lee Curtis. You love to see a, you know, a Hollywood family acting together on screen. And you know what? I feel like we're, we're at intermission right now through this game, through this beautiful movie night. A lot of you got that one wrong. So I don't know. I feel like surprising you with a little gift. How about a gift drop? You into it? Tap that gift drop, baby. Drop that gift. Woo. Let's see what you got. You know what I got? A bowl of popcorn. Hello. what you get? You get an extra life? Did you get maybe some juju bees or I don't know, tickets to see, you know, some, some big, Movie, I, let me know in the chat what you got. I hope you liked it, you know, from me to you, of course. But we are moving on right now to Q7. Which of these Marvel Universe films has a Stan Lee cameo? Ghost Rider, Iron Man 3, or X-Men First Class? There are a few Stan free holes in the MCU, but he did appear as a beauty pageant judge in Iron Man 3. Who got it right? Iron Man 3, 21,587. Some of you did use an extra life. I see you and I love it. Stan was even spottable in the Deadpool movies, although he didn't create Deadpool. That one came much later. And I love Ryan Reynolds. And that is my personal connection to Deadpool, <laughs> to the MCU. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number eight. I'm loving our movie date. I hope you are too. 
Which of these was not directed by Clint Eastwood? Bronco Billy, Hang 'em High, The Outlaw Josie Wales. He's approaching 50 years as a director, and we all know and we all know he owes a lot to the western genre, but it was a guy named Ted Post who directed Hang 'em High. Hang 'em High is the answer 12,452. You got it right. You hung, you hang them high. You didn't hang them low. You, you hanged them high. I got that. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe the most interesting Clint Eastwood fact is he's an anagram for Old West action movies. Also, something I learned this week randomly on my podcast, he does two takes only. Two takes! Can you imagine of each scene? What, what if you sneeze? What if I, I mean, you know, we're live right now, so I get one take. And we're moving on to question number nine. Who worked on the SNL spin-off film, It's Pat, but received no screen credit? Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, or Quentin Tarantino? A lot of movies have been based off of an SNL sketch or a specific character. And if you look back, Pulp Fiction wasn't yet in theaters when Tarantino did a rewrite on this movie, It's Pat. Who got it? Quentin Tarantino, 13,413! I like that number. You got it right. Still, you know what? This was post Reservoir Dogs, but listen, hey, we all need jobs sometimes, right? Even if you're gonna rewrite, it's Pat. Even in Hollywood, you know, you need to get that job, get that money, babe, just like you're gonna get in two questions. We're moving on to question number 10. The cast of Sunset Boulevard includes a future star of the original version of what TV show? The Addams Family, Dragnet, or Star Trek? The faded glory of Norma Desmond is mixed in with some up and coming talent in the form of Joe Gillis's friend Artie, played by Jack Webb, the creator and star of Dragnet. Ooh, Dragnet, that was a close one. 7,000, that was like, that was like borderline savage. 7,384, you got it, right? Sure, Sheldrake appeared on one Adams Family episode, but we said star, right? It's all in the words. It's all in the words of the question. We love words. <laughs> Moving on to Q11. The only voice actor to work in every Pixar feature film appeared in what Best Picture Oscar winner? Amadeus, Chariots of Fire, Gandhi. We say appeared because Pixar's most prolific voice actor was ironically dubbed in Gandhi. Can you believe that he was dubbed in Gandhi? 4270, 4,270, you got it right, congratulations. John Ratzenberger, he's the most, he's most famous as Cliff on Cheers, has the voice of Martin Sheen when he talks to Candace Bergen as Margaret Burke White. Can you believe that? In Gandhi, he's dubbed, I couldn't believe that. What if you found out that I am dubbed by Meryl Streep this entire game? <laughs> I'll never tell, but you know what I'm gonna tell you right now? You did it. We're moving on to the final question of the night. We're already at Q12. I hope we don't, oh, we better stay on. <laughs> We're not going out this time. Not this week. It is time for the final question of the night. This is for big money. You made it this far. I have so much faith in you. I'm really excited to see who wins this. Take a deep breath, eat some popcorn. Here we go, Q12. Which of these is an Italian neo-realist film? Bellissima, A Brief Vacation, or Eight and a Half? After documenting post-war Italy with powerful emotion, many directors strayed from their neorealist roots. Fellini went surreal with Eight and a Half, and Vittorio De Sica did straight melodrama in Brief Vacation, but a defining work of neorealism is Bellissima. Who got it? Woo! 1,583 of you! You just won HQ Trivia Movie Night, baby! You're taking home the gold! Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Let's see what you're bringing home. That was pretty savage on that last one. Whew, scared me. All right, big money, big winners. 
Oh my goodness, three dollars and sixteen fifteen cents. That's a lot of money. Big congratulations to Maru Junct Junction, Mendy Lee. You did it. Congrats to Aisha Five, Sophia Eight Ninety, Ray Roy, Miss Kendra. Who else do we have? Gouda Five, Alina Double O Six Seven. Oh Johnson, Luca Barker. Shazoids, I'm loving these names. I'm having fun with these tonight. Shazoids, you got it right. Shapia, I think I said all of them actually perfect. Congratulations to all of you, to everyone on a superstar performance. It's amazing to see, you know, the A-list movie trivia star shine on this red carpet. And even if you didn't win tonight, you look great out there. And thank you so much for playing. Tomorrow night, you know, HQ Trivia proper is back with my fam, the money flipper himself, Matt Richards, at 9 p.m. Be there, ready to get your game on, just like they did in Space Jam. <laughs> and don't forget about that charity, Food Bank of the Rockies, keeping stomachs full in Colorado and Wyoming. They're at foodbankrockies.org, right here. Every little donation helps. It's so nice of you to help out if you can. And HQties, you had me at hello. I had the best time here tonight. I always do. I hope you did too. I have been your host, Anna Roisman. Send me some of your home movies of you playing HQ because it warms my heart. You know, probably as much as a as this ball of popcorn is gonna hurt it. <laughs> and until next time, hey, um, stay classy, San Diego. Mmm, milk was a bad choice.